Hell yes! Hmm. -hmm. Welcome, ladies and gents, to Let's Play Hidden and Dangerous. One of the bestest games of all time, in my opinion, anyway. So yeah. Here it is. I love this game to fucking bits. It's one of the first kind of proper games I played, I think, for a computer or anything, really. And it's awesome! It's quite old. Well, I say quite old, that's kind of an understatement. It's pretty damn old. But it's really good. I mean... It's really, really fucking good. It's basically, in a nutshell, it's it's kind of like, and I might be wrong on this, I've not really fact-checked or anything, but it's kind of like the world's first ever realistic shooter, I guess. And a lot, of, some of you might actually groan at this point and be all like, Oh no! Um, I hate realistic shooters these days. They're all so boring and blah blah blah. I want to go back to playing Duke Nukem or whatever. But actually, if you're one, if you're someone like me who can appreciate the finer points of realistic and unrealistic shooters, then this is an excellent game. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's probably one of the first one game. It's the first shooter I ever I've ever come across in chronologically in terms of going back over the years that actually made you use the iron sights on your gun to shoot stuff with, for example. But anyway, yeah. It's pretty freaking awesome. It's one of my favourite games of all time, and yeah, it's just it's just great. You know, all those. A good way to sum up this thing would be, you know, all those like old war war movies that you used to watch like on a Sunday afternoon when you were a kid. You know, like I'm talking like Where Eagles Dare and Heroes of Telemark and uh, Guns of Navarro and all that kind of shit. This is like the unofficial game of all those movies rolled into one, okay? So, yeah. I hope you'll enjoy it. I certainly am going to enjoy it. Uh, oh, it's also free. I forgot to mention that. The uh, company who made it, uh, Illusion Softworks, when they made um, Hidden and Dangerous 2, which is also a very good game, they made the original Deluxe Edition completely free to download. Completely. Just as a, as a, as a market, marketing drive for the new game. So. Yeah, I will put a link in the description, and you can watch this, and you can play it for yourselves, free of charge. And that's like the biggest bargain in the history of bargains ever this century, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. So yeah, let's get fucking started. Uh, right, okay, we have a, this is the campaign screen, we've got bunch of campaigns here set in different countries throughout World War Two, ranging from the very kind of beginning of World War Two. well, no, it's something like 1942, yeah, says there on the date thing, all the way through to uh, the Cold War, I believe, actually. These last three here are uh, delu the Deluxe Edition expansion campaigns, which I've never actually played before, ever. So this should be quite interesting. Uh, once we get to that point, because then I'll be playing blind completely from that point on. Because I, when I originally played this back in the day, I didn't have the deluxe edition; I just had the regular old copy, which I actually paid for, you know. So back before this went free to play. So yeah, Operation Iron Swarm, Italy, fifth and seventh, 1942. The goal of this campaign is to free captured English pilots of shot down bombers. The Germans are holding them somewhere in the Piemonte area in Italy, obviously. Uh, we haven't found out where exactly the pilots are, but we will have to find them at all costs. It's got a little cinematic, which I'll play for you in a minute. Um, hopefully this recording all works out right. Like I said, it's kind of an old game, so I have no idea how Fraps is going to um, respond to it, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. Um, that's the introduction over with. Like I said, it's just... It's the, the game is like a 1960s, 1950s war movie. Mainly 60s, 70s war movies. In the form of a video game. It's just fantastic. I mean, even the freaking soundtrack you can hear in the battle. Battle? Background, even. Um, sounds like it was composed by Ron fucking Goodwin. So, you know. Doesn't get more authentic than that. So let's go. Let's watch a little intro cinematic. And hopefully it won't, like, stop working or something.
Yeah, right. There you go. Not very long, but it gets you, gives you the general gist of what's going on, essentially. Um, so yeah, this will be the first campaign we're doing. Each campaign is, uh, I mean, they vary in how long they are in terms of missions, but as a general rule of thumb, they're about three, four, five missions long each. So, and it might not sound like much, but uh, one mission on this game can sometimes quite take quite a while to accomplish. So yeah, we will start. Okay, yeah. For mission one, mission Amber Arrow, Italy, 5th of 7th, 1942, 5.38 in the morning. I'm not sure how good our drop is going to be, but we're going to meet with our Italian friends on the far riverbank uh, in a deserted quarry. Good luck. So yeah, the gist of this first mission, it will, it will show you in the... It plays a fantastic little briefing um, cinematic as well, voiced by this incredibly English sounding, you know what I mean when, I hear, when you hear it. Um, briefing guy, voiceover dude, uh, complete with, and the, the entire mission briefing is illustrated in the form of one of those little model map things they used to actually make during the war for commando raids and stuff like that so they could study the area with actual little models, almost, you know, I'm talking like Warhammer ship here basically, they actually made these things and they planned out their missions using them and it actually does that in the form of one of those on this which is absolutely fantastic so yeah, I think if I click next now, it m it'll either send us to the loadout screen or the briefing, so I'll shut up in preparation for that. Ah, right, loadout, okay. Men into campaign. Basically, for each campaign, you have to pick a roster of soldiers out of a big list of ones you've got here. There's loads of them. Uh, they all have their own individual different skill sets and abilities. As you can see, you've got over here percentages in the different skills which change depending on the recruit there are some recruits which are way way better than others and there are some which are pretty damn shit but you know they're mainly as fillers and cannon fodder but hey my general goal with this game though is to try and not get anyone killed if I can possibly help it during a mission because uh, the first time I played through this game I just as soon if, if a guy got shot on a mission not only did you lose all their equipment but um, that they were carrying with them, but also it kind of means it, but means that by the time you get to the, sort of like the later campaigns, we're talking like end of the war, moving into those deluxe edition Cold War campaigns. Um, it means that the men you have to work with that are left over from the ones that didn't get killed earlier on in the war are really crap, and that's not good because the missions in the later campaigns obviously are a lot harder. So. Yeah, not, in order not to drive straight into the difficulty curve head on, we will try and preserve our troops as much as po humanely possible. So yeah, let's get started. I remember some of these guys. They had oh look, it's the, look that's the original Captain Price from Call of Fucking Duty. There, look, he's got the he's got the beard, and moustache, and everything. <laughs> I've never noticed that before. Uh, right, we'll be having him then. John Winston, Lieutenant, Lieutenant, I should say. It is the uh, British Army after all. Um, long time member of the Royal Navy Guards. He joined the SAS as a volunteer. Oh, you play as the uh, m members of the SAS in this game, in case I forgot to mention that. Um, he joined the SAS as a volunteer at the time of its establishment. He did not take part in, in many battles, but he proved himself as an all-around and cap reliable soldier. Distinctions, medal for his actions during the Norwegian campaign. That's early in the war, I must, I imagine. Uh, so yeah, we'll have him because his shooting's pretty good, his reaction's kind of average, his stealth's not bad, his strength is fucking fantastic, this guy can carry an entire elephant on his back, and his endurance is pretty damn good as well, so we'll have him. Uh, we will have Sir Thomas Lord Mule Woolly, nicknamed Mule by his friends for his ability to carry heavy loads for long distances, distinguished himself during the operations of LRDG, Long Range Desert Group. He is an expert in the field of desert warfare and survival and survival under difficult conditions. Distinctions. He was awarded several French medals for his activities in Bir Hakim region. Now we won't be going into any deserts in this campaign, uh, certainly. But again, he's another pack mule of a character. Look, strength 100% for this guy, so he can carry loads of crap. So it's good to have at least maybe one or two of these guys on your in your roster for a campaign. Right. Let's move on. William Mad Calvert Major. Oh, no, he is a major, sorry. It's not his name. Uh, an all-round soldier with a long and colourful career. He was one of 
the men who were present at the birth of the SAS. Distinctions Victory Cross, French War Cross, and numerous other British, French, British and French decorations for active service in war fields of Europe, 1939 to 1940, and Africa in 1941. So this guy is a fucking veteran, basically. And he's a major as well, so he'll be our ranking officer, I believe, for this operation, most likely. I mean, we, I think there's, there's two majors available, Paul Mountbatten and... Uh, Mad Calvert. Both of them are pretty damn good. The only problem with Mountbatten is that he has very, very low endurance and strength. So I generally tend to favour Mad Calvert. But hey, you know, it's up to you. This guy does have way more reactions, so... You know. I'm going to pick William Mad Calvert, though, for this. So he will be our commanding officer, essentially. Now we need some sharpshooters. And for that, there's quite a few people to pick. We have... Robert Vanguard, shooting 95% reaction, 70, 65, 60, 95, 70, right, I'm, I kind of evenly match those two, I'm just going to keep looking if there's any more, there is one guy, ah yeah, William Spiderweb, um, shooting 100%, although he's pretty damn handicapped in his other skills, so, uh, volunteer reservist, due to his excellent results during shooting tests, he was attached to a training program for snipers, he went through a selection process with satisfactory results, distinctions none, but we are going to take him just because I'm, I, there's one or two missions in this particular campaign that may require a badass sniper or two. So we'll have him and we'll have... Uh, we'll have... Robert Vanguard, I think. A member of the Royal Navy before joining SAS. He served as a heavy anti-aircraft gunner on a gunboat. He passed the admission test satisfactorily and his crack marksmanship was noted. Distinctions now. We'll have you as well. Let's have a look who else we got. We've got this guy, Anthony Icewitcher, who's a stealth expert, but I don't really care a whole lot for stealth in this game, so I'm probably going to pass on him. Julio Macho Zapata. This Spanish Republican escaped from Spain to France after a victory of victory of the fascists in his country and joined the foreign legions. After the fall of France, he joined the British army. At the time of his joining the SAS, he was accused of being a communist. I like him already. Um, in spite of his many merits and experience, he has not been decorated yet. Well, he's all, well. this guy is... He's only a private, bless him, but he is a veteran among veterans. And he's a good all-rounder as well. You need to get a decent amount of these sort of all-rounder type characters too. I mean, he's got shooting 80, 75, 75, 70, 75. So yeah, this guy's pretty damn good. So we'll be having him as well. I think the rest are probably just going to be filler guys. Um, there's this guy, David Rodney, who looks suspiciously like Benito Mussolini. Um, <laughs> what's this guy? Robin Hood's man. Oh, another, another sharpshooter. Shooting 100%. He's actually slightly better than this guy, I think, in terms of his stats overall. But we'll just, I can't be bothered. We'll keep the other guy for now. Um, John Brown, another... Nothing to say about this guy, really. Volunteer reservist. He went through the standard selection procedures with very good results. He's another decent all-rounder, so yeah, we'll have him as well. Need one more. Gilbert Caven, private. Uh, considerable time as civilian employee of the army, involved in the training of parachutists. Dum -dum 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 -dum. He's again a pretty good all-rounder. The checking if there's anyone else is pretty good. Thomas Mills, he's not bad either. Jan Wojciechowski, a Pole from Gdansk who escaped to Britain in early 1939 when intensity of the fascist violence increased. He passed admission tests with very good results. Um, yeah, why not? He's not a bad all-rounder and he's got quite good stealth as well in case I really do feel the need. So, yeah, all right, we'll have the Pole. Okay, well that's our team selected. You can, by the way, just hit auto setup and it'll just fill out your roster entirely for you. But I'd prefer to lend it a more personal touch. Anyway, so let's carry on. Now we're on the loadout screen. This is always the fun bit for me anyway. Um, basically now we have to pick all the weapons and, crucially, the ammunition for our weapons for the entire campaign. So literally we need to pick enough stuff here. 